Happy Mother's Day. I'm Pastor Paul Kolick, and I would like to welcome you to Hope Lutheran Church of Linden. Our 50-day celebration of Easter continues as we solemnly gather in the presence of our crucified and risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Present he is, for we see and hear him touching and speaking to us through his Spirit in the preaching of his Holy Word. We gather not as much to give anything to him, but to receive from him his gifts of deliverance, salvation, and righteousness. Today, once again, he bestows on you his own righteousness, making of us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession. Our sin has been taken away, and we are renewed with eternal life by faith created in us by his Spirit. In this faith, our doubts and fears are taken away as we look forward to our heavenly home, the many rooms and mansions, the place prepared for us as we await his final return. Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Please pray with me. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day which you have created. We thank you for this opportunity to worship. Even though it is a little different than what we're used to, we still thank you for this opportunity. We also thank you, Lord, for being with us even through the trials and tribulations of our earthly times and lives. Lord, we ask your blessings on the service, your blessings on all your people watching today. We ask that you bless Pastor Paul and his message and that it opens our hearts and minds to your word. And we ask for your continued guidance in your Holy Spirit to help us be faithful to your word, not only today, but throughout our lives. We thank you and ask you for these things in the name of your Son. Amen.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man, in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless. But the way of the wicked he brings to ruin. The Lord will reign forever. Your God, O Zion, to all generations, praise the Lord. Let us pray. O God, you make the minds of your faithful to be with one will. Grant that we may love what you have commanded and desire what you promise. That among the many changes of this world, our hearts may be fixed where true joys are found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my
Our first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 6, verses 1 through 9, chapter 7, verse 2a, and verses 51 through 60. Now in these days, when the disciples were increasing in number, a complaint by the Hellenists arose against the Hebrews because their widows were being neglected in the daily distribution. And the twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the spirit of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty. But we will devote ourselves to prayer and to the ministry of the word. And what they said pleased the whole gathering. And they chose Stephen, a man of faith and of the Holy Spirit, and Philip, and Prochorus, and Nicanor, and Timon, and Parmenas, and Nicolaus, a proselyte of Antioch. These they set before the apostles, and they prayed and laid their hands on them. And the word of God continued to increase, and the number of the disciples multiplied greatly in Jerusalem, and a great many of the priests became obedient to the faith. And Stephen, full of grace and power, was doing great wonders and signs among the people. Then some of, the, some of those who belonged to the synagogue of the freedmen, as it was called, and of the Cyrenians, and of the Alexandrians, and of those from Sicilia and Asia, rose up and disputed with Stephen. And Stephen said, Brothers and fathers, hear me. You stiff-necked people, uncircumcised in heart and ears, you always resist the Holy Spirit. As your fathers did, so do you. Which of the prophets did not your fathers persecute? And they killed those who announced beforehand the coming of the righteous one, whom you have now betrayed and murdered, you who received the law as delivered by angels and did not keep it. Now when they heard these things, they were enraged, and they ground their teeth at him. But he, full of the Holy Spirit, gazed into heaven and saw the glory of God, and Jesus standing at the right hand of God. And he said, Behold, I see the heavens open." and the Son of Man standing at the right hand of God. But they cried out with a loud voice, and stopped their ears, and rushed together at him. Then they cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their garments at the feet of a young man named Saul. And as they were stoning Stephen, he called out, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And falling to his knees, he cried out with a loud voice, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our epistle is from 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 2 through 10. Like newborn infants, long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up to salvation. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is good, as you come to him, a living stone rejected by men, but in the sight of God, chosen and precious, you yourselves, like living stones, are being built up as a spiritual house to be hope, a holy priesthood to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. For it stands in Scripture, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone, a cornerstone chosen and precious, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. So the honor is for you who believe, but for those who do not believe, the stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone, and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble because they disobey the word, and as they were destined to. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for his own possession, that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were not a people, but now you are God's people. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 14th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, that where I am, you may be also, and you know the way to where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. 
If you had known me, you would have known my father also. From now on, you do know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the father and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, have I been with you so long and you still do not know me, Philip? Whoever has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own authority, but the Father who dwells in me does his works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, or else believe on account of the works themselves. Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever believes in me will also do the works that I do, and greater works than these will he do, because I am going to the Father. Whatever you ask in my name, this I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask me anything in my name, I will do it. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus, in today's gospel text, 
gives his disciples and us this clear command. Let not your hearts be troubled. What he is talking about are those troubles which we classify as, as worry, fear, anxiety, or stress. The kind of heart trouble that feels like a, a loss of hope, a lack of faith, a panic attack, or pangs of uncertainty. The kind of heart trouble that keeps you up at night, thinking about money, keeping a, or losing a job, fretting over a child, a failing marriage, or a troubled relationship. And with all the uncertainty around us today, perhaps you are having bouts of worry or fear over this pandemic or the effects that it is having on you or your family. Perhaps your finances are a mess or there are serious family problems as a result. Perhaps you are dealing with other health issues and you cannot get needed treatment for either yourself or a loved one. Perhaps you are isolated and alone and need, in need of company and companionship. Or perhaps your heart is troubled by the death of a friend or a loved one and you're not able to have a funeral or come together to mourn, to grieve, and comfort each other in your time of need. Perhaps fear has gripped your heart in a cold, icy embrace and its vice-like grip is threatening to crush you. These are the heart troubles that our Lord is talking about. It's this kind that we have all experienced to some degree in the past or may even be experiencing today. It's faith trouble, a lacking of peace that can consume. It steals your joy and your peace. This heart trouble, this physical, emotional, and spiritual kind of trouble is a very real threat to our well-being even as followers of Jesus Christ. When the devil whispers his lies in your ear, when you read posts or articles that awaken fear, or the reports from various news media fill your heart with dread, where are you turning for comfort and peace? Who do you trust? As you religiously consume the news, do you turn to the various fear-filling pundits of your preferred political tribe to give you a lasting wisdom in a world that is crumbling around you? Do you look to your government? Do you look to your political party leaders? Or with this coronavirus pandemic affecting every part of your life, do you look to the medical community for answers? Do you place your faith and trust in high profile doctors or scientists? Are you? Do you look to mere men and women for answers? Are these who you trust? Are they the ones in whom you expect to find comfort and peace? If you're looking to any of these, if you find any comfort in them at all, you will be short-lived, and ultimately you will have even greater heartache and despair as they fail you. Don't put your trust in them. Our psalm today speaks to this very truth. Put not your trust in princes, in a son of man, in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. President Trump will let you down. Governor Whitmer, she'll let you down. Dr. Fauci, he'll let you down. And yes, even your pastor will let you down. Let's look again at Jesus' words from our gospel. Let not your heart be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. The only key to a healthy, untroubled heart is faith in Jesus. If you are looking for a Savior today, there is and only will ever be one. He is who our hearts need to stay healthy, whole, and at peace. It is Jesus, only Jesus. Faith in Christ alone for our salvation, for our sins, and all the heartache and hurt of this life. Believe in him. Trust in him. Wrap yourselves in his love, care, and protection. That does not mean that your life will be trouble-free. 
Jesus tells us that in this world you will have trouble. But he also tells us to take heart. I have overcome the world. What this means for us is that no matter the pain, the hurt, and the hardship, Jesus endured all that this world can throw at you. He endured it all for you. His sinless life, his suffering, his death on the cross was all to save you so that you can have forgiveness, peace, and everlasting life. Trust in his promises ever and always. As you go through this life, you are never alone. You have been united with him in baptism. You share in his victory over the world, sin, death, and the devil. As his dear child, you can know his peace, no matter the circumstance, whether it is in joy or in sorrow. And when that day of trouble comes, as it will, do not let dread or let fear grip your heart. Call upon God. He is always in a position to save you from your troubles. Do not look to man. Why would you look to the creature rather than call on the creator for help? It sounds simplistic, but it's true. Most of, if not all, of our heart trouble stems from the fact that too many times Christians do not exercise their faith in Christ. When the anxieties of life invariably come upon them, they are overcome because they are placing their trust in man rather than looking to God. How much pain and suffering of heart and mind would disappear if we would only seek Jesus and receive his word of hope and a lasting peace which comes from hearing and trusting in his promises. God is absolutely unstoppable. He is unfailing. He is constant. He is full of power and might. He is love. He is joy. He is peace. He is your help. He never wearies in the slightest. He is all present, all powerful, all knowing. And he is enthusiastic about graciously helping you throughout your life. Never let a weak or troubled heart keep you from turning to God for help or trusting in God and his goodness. He is your God who loves you, who died to save you, who by his power and his grace delivers all who call upon him. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, who keeps faith forever, who executes justice for the oppressed, who gives food to the hungry, the Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord watches over the sojourners. He upholds the widow and the fatherless. Believe his promises. Trust in his word. He tells us in Psalm 50 verse 15, Call on me in the day of trouble, and I will deliver you. In the day of financial trouble, in the day of health trouble, in the day of pestilence, in the day of war, any trouble, marriage trouble, family trouble, sickness, death, call on him and trust in him. Listen and hear what he is telling you today through his holy word. There is always hope. There is always salvation to all who believe in him. There is help, there is rescue, there is peace, there is life. There is hope for the most egregious sinner. There is hope for you. Believe in God, believe in Jesus, trust him, call on him. Some time ago, we had this on our sign out front, and it is especially appropriate for the circumstances that we find ourselves in today. It's a simple play on words that speaks tremendous truth. N-O, Jesus, N-O, peace. K-N-O, Jesus, K-N-O, peace. Knowing Jesus, believing in him, trusting him, you are assured of the forgiveness of your sins and life eternal, and that he is always with you to help you in your time of trouble. 
even those heart troubles. With this good news, we can sing with the psalmist, praise the Lord, praise the Lord, O my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. And Jesus says to you today, let not your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In his holy name. Amen. Having heard God's word, let us confess our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As newborn infants who long for the pure spiritual milk, so let us come before the Lord, seeking his mercy with confidence that his grace will be sufficient for all our needs. Almighty Father, everlasting God, your Son has revealed you to us as a merciful Lord. Give to us your Holy Spirit, that we may believe in him whom you have sent and do the greater works he has told us we will do in his name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord God, you have promised to build up your church to be a holy priesthood, that your people may offer the spiritual sacrifices of praise and thanksgiving acceptable to you. Bless your church and bring all congregations back together again. Bless all pastors who proclaim Christ to us. Bless all those who serve your church in positions of leadership, that your church may be supplied with faithful servants of your word. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Holy God, your power brought all things into being, and still you preserve what you have made. Bless our President, the Congress of these United States, our Governor, and all elected and appointed civil servants, so that they may honor you and your purpose, establishing order and justice encouraging the virtue and protecting all life. Give wisdom and moderation to them in their leadership for the well-being of the nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. O merciful Father, you have compassion upon the sick and those in need and have promised not to ignore them in their afflictions. Turn back the pandemic across the globe and give us relief. Bless the sick with healing those who suffer with strength and patience, the dying with peace, and those who mourn with comfort. Hear us on behalf of all those who have requested our prayers and all those whom we name in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, you have established the home and bless those who show us your love. On this Mother's Day, as we honor our mothers and give thanks to you for them, Bless them all and the children in their care. Bless all families and make their homes places of blessing and love, where your word is spoken, forgiveness reigns, and love is displayed. Give us good examples to inspire you to all that is good and pure, and to seek after these things. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Compassionate Father, you are not aloof from the needs of this body and life, and you have called us to love our neighbor in need and give aid to the poor. Give us courage and faith that we may not fear sharing the resources you have supplied with those who live in want. Let love be perfected among us to drive out selfish fears. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Father of an eternal mercy, you have raised up witnesses in every age and blessed us with those who endured suffering 
and even death in faithfulness to Christ. We give you thanks for these faithful saints and martyrs, and we pray you to make us strong when we face the day of test, that at length we may be brought with them into the joy of your presence and the glory of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We praise you, O God, for your goodness in hearing the prayers of your people and granting us confidence to approach your throne of mercy. Hear us now in the name and of, for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, through whom, with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, both now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. No. shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen.